How do you scale from $100,000 per month to $1 million a month? Six figures to seven figures a month. Worked with three brands now that's been able to crush the seven figure a month mark. And in today's video, I wanna basically showcase all of the different learning curves, fundamentals, things like that, that has to be overcame from six to seven figures a month. All the different things I've learned, you know, working with the brands that we've personally helped, also to being in masterminds and stuff and seeing other people go from six figures to seven figures a month. So uh, it'll be a very different video than probably a lot of my other videos are tailored more towards like how to do 100K in a month. So before we get started, hit the like button, hit that subscribe button for new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you're new to the channel, my name is Nick Terrio. I run Ecom Growth Agency, also coach and mentor students. Both those links are below. Have Nick Terrio run your ads, have Nick Terrio mentor you. Let's dive into the video. So how to scale from $100,000 a month to $1 million a month with Facebook ads. Okay, now granted, we've taken three brands with Facebook ads. Uh, Facebook ads is still probably the dominant sales channel. Um, and there's a few things I wanna to touch on around here. Just before I get started, I just wanna show you a few of the brands that we've personally helped scale. So, you know, this is one brand right here. Uh, they're averaging about a million dollars a month um, or, you know, in Q3. 2023, they're averaging a million dollars a month, million euros, but it's basically one-to-one. -one. It's another brand that we helped do about $6 million um, in Q4 of 2022. And then this is another brand right here where uh, they, you know, we've been working with them for a long period of time. They were in the lead generation space and we spent four and a half million dollars in 2022 for them, making back about $25 million in revenue. So the biggest things I've learned from these brands and then also to, like I said, just in masterminds and stuff in general, uh, talking with a lot of other business owners is that scaling from 100K a month to $1 million a month comes down to three or four key things, acquisition, retention, cash flow, and systems, okay? And we're gonna be talking about all that in today's video, okay? So first things first is that from zero to about 99K a month, all you're trying to find is product market fit, okay? Generally, you can do this with just a couple of good ads. I mean, like, like 99K a month, that's literally just 3K a day, depending on what you're selling, like that's nothing crazy, okay? I find that a lot of stores can do 100K a month, no problem at all. And really the only problem for 100K a month is that product market fit, okay? What is product market fit? Alex Ramosi, when customers buy the product, use it continuously and tell their friends about it okay so if you're selling a shitty little you know aliexpress product that people get and never want to return to your business you need a better product market fit okay so figure out the product market fit and also needs to solve a real problem or you know uh maybe like because i know like i say solve a real problem clothing brand owners are me like i own a clothing brand well you know what this one right here is actually a clothing brand literally right here and we solve zero problems okay we just simply have an amazing brand. So if you want a clothing brand, build a brand that people want to be a part of, okay? Now, from 100K a month to $1 million per month is the scaling period of time, okay? Now, this is basically just repeatedly doing the things that worked well to get you 100K a month, just at scale over a larger group of people, okay? Again, larger group of people because that's usually where you're hiring more people and stuff, okay? So number one is like your main offer, all right? So all of the brands that we've scaled up to seven figures a month, um, or been assistance to help scaling the seven figures a month is that they have a rock solid main offer, okay? So for example, for clothing, maybe it's a specific t-shirt that just sells amazing, okay? Maybe if it's supplements, just one specific supplement that just sells amazing, okay? They've been able to scale up to 100K a month with just that one offer, okay? This is where majority of ad spend is still will be spent, okay? So from zero to 100K and 100K to a million dollars a month, you're, it's not about launching new products in your Facebook ad account. It's about how can we spend more on what's currently working, our best offer to get people in the door, okay? Now, going to the ad account side, I'm not really gonna touch much on the ad account side, but the ad account side is all about ad account simplification, okay? You know, the most we ever spent in a day was $100,000 in a day on Facebook, okay? And we've been able to do this with ad account simplification, okay? We're launching one campaign because um, we only have one offer in the account, one product in the account. We're launching that one campaign, that one product, okay? And then what we're doing is, is we're doing one campaign per country, okay? I have a full, full video going step by step of how we run the ad account right here, broad targeting times and dynamic creatives, 2023 Facebook ad tutorial, step-by-step -step video on how to do all the tactical stuff inside the ad account, and I'll show you right there. All of these brands we're working with, 
90% to 70% of their spend is still dominant Facebook. They do spend a little bit on Google. They spend a little bit on TikTok, but the majority of the spend is on Facebook. Okay. Also provides more longevity and stability without account simplification. Now, the next thing is that they have a rock solid creative team. Okay. Um, either in-house or outsourced and they're producing anywhere from 12, you know, on a short side 12 to 24 new ads a month okay now this is not iterations of the same dog shit creative you've been running this is brand new content filmed every single month 12 to 24 pieces of content okay that they're launching all right and some of our clients pay us you know we do charge a hefty fee on top of our retainer fee uh, for the agency to do the content side or they have an in-house team already that's doing it and we simply script out the ads of what we want for them to take action on now next thing is your list okay your list is quite frankly the most valuable asset you could have for your business okay this includes your sms list your email list and basically customers and leads people that have purchased from you and people haven't purchased from you okay you need to pretend that tomorrow all you have is your website and your list okay your social media accounts were deleted, your basically like your, um, you know, your Facebook ads, like everything is completely deleted. You only have your email list right now. Okay. And you have to continue to run and grow your business. How would you do it? Okay. Great thinking time question. Okay. Well, easy way to do it is get more customers to refer you through your list, get more customers to purchase again. Simple, very simple. Okay. So dig deep when you think time question and you know, obviously we know we need to get more customers to refer us and we also need to get more customers to buy again. How will we do it? What specific things do we need to launch in that list to be able to get that, um, you know, to happen? Okay. Next thing is new products. Okay. So all of our accounts, they launch new products. All right. Now they're not launching these new products in the Facebook ad account. Some of them do, but very rarely. Okay. If they have a new product that absolutely just crushes on the list side and the retention side, then we'll launch in the Facebook ad account if there is more, you know, like uh, I would say more inventory in that case. Okay. Inventory is very dependent on that. Okay. So look at Apple. You know, Apple has the MacBook, they have the iPad, they have the iPhone, and they have the iPod. Okay. But then look at the iP um, iPhone specifically. Every year there's a new version. You know, I had a student come to me and say, hey, Nick, I want to launch a new version of my product. But I'm scared because now if I launch a new version of the product, it's basically gonna be like, hey, the other version sucks and now we're launching this new one. When all my customers want refunds? Like what the fuck? No, Apple does it literally every year. If Apple launched a new iPhone tomorrow, would you be like, oh, well this iPhone sucks and we'll get a new one? No, you promote the new features in that product and you basically go out there and you buy a new product. You don't give two shits about that. So look at iPhone, the version every year, there's improvements colors it feels like every year is a new color for the iphone sizes different versions and sizes and then um all that of existing best-selling products so go look at your best-selling product right now i could have new flavors if you sell a supplement new flavors new sizes new versions what are all the different things you could do to get more of you know like launch new products into your store okay this is going to improve your retention Okay. Now with retention, this is with more people purchasing from you again, after already purchasing you from once, this is going to increase your profits in the back end, which is going to make less stress on the performance of Facebook ads. All of our big brands, they don't really stress on Facebook ads because their retention so good that they make profits from other parts of the business. Now, again, know your target CPA. You should know your target CPA. You should also know your three month LTV. Again, I have a video right here, how to calculate target CPA. I even give you a really, really, really cool Google sheet that you can deploy in your business, help you calculate your target CPA and specific metrics and stuff like that. You can also run different scenarios of, hey, what would my business look at it? You know, look like at this CPA at this much spend or this or this different key points right there. Okay. Next one is a promo cal calendar. Okay. So a lot of these brands, again, like part of scaling from six figures a month to seven figures a month is, is lock tight systems. Okay. And one of that is a promo cal calendar. Okay. Now it doesn't sound sexy at all. It's basically the only thing a marketing degree is worth it, worth in, you know, going to college for, but you need to be able to look at the next six months, maybe even three months, maybe the next 30 days. Okay. And know exactly what's happening. Um, I wouldn't say day by day, but like week by week. So what weeks are in your next drop? Okay. 
what weeks do you want to run a special promo? Like for example, maybe a 30% off site wide for these couple of days. Okay. And have that mapped out. Okay. I like to have something fun and interesting every single week. So maybe one week is a sell. Next week is a drop. Maybe the next week is just one specific product on sale. Maybe the next week it's a free product with the purchase of another product. Maybe the next week it's a drop. Maybe the next week it's I don't know, maybe an exclusive drop, like just every week have something interesting and it doesn't need to be a full week long, but just like two or three days. Okay. And this promo calendar needs to be shared with your ads team, your email team and your organic team. So that way everyone is on the same page of what's happening. Okay. Uh, we've seen this time and time again, where like the paid advertising team is not on the same page as the email team and they're both going in their own directions and like none of the messaging is lining up at all. All right. Next thing is customer service. All right. We've seen customer service break so many times. Okay. Um, as you start to scale, you know, ton of more orders coming into your business. Like it's crazy. Cause like when we scaled up to about hundred K a day in ad spend, I mean, we were getting like, I literally cut an email every second of the day. Okay. Every second of the day, we were getting an email with some question about an order. Okay. It's insane. All right. Of how fast those emails start to stack up and how much time it taxes on you um, for like just throughout the day of like getting your work done and stuff like that. So you need to, be able to hire and train customer service reps fast in your business. You need to be keeping a knowledge library of all the common questions that's asked in the customer service back in with specific directions on how to answer that question and how to, to perform a specific task, like find that order or something like that, how to deal with this particular problem. You know, hey, I lost my package. Well, we know for a fact they got it delivered. Okay, how do we deal with that problem? All right, do we just send them a new one? Do we just give them a refund? Do we just ignore them? Like, what, what, what do we do in that specific case? Okay, you need to be documenting all of this and keeping it a knowledge library inside your business. Start off with Google Drive at first, create some Google Docs, um, Loom videos are my favorite, just simple things like that just to get the ball moving. Next thing is shipping. Shipping is usually the second thing that breaks or is shipping is what breaks customer service, okay? Um, we've been in, you know, some situations where, you know, like brands scaled up really fast, had some shipping issues. And then all of a sudden, like a couple hundred orders are like all of a sudden getting a package a couple days later. And guess what? All a couple hundred of those people are emailing the business trying to figure out where that's at, which puts a shitload more work on the customer service team. Okay. A lot of our clients just use three PLs in that case. So they don't even handle the shipping side. Um, if you are doing the shipping yourself, then you need to be stress testing it. Okay. Hey, like it might be cool to scale from 1k a day of ad spend right now to 2k a day of ad spend but can we even handle that realistically could we handle a 2x in order flow right now you know if we're shipping 100 packages a day could we realistically handle ship 200 packages in a day okay if so what needs to happen or if we can't what needs to happen so we could ship 200 packages in a day these are all realistic things you need to think about because as you start to scale i mean 100k a month to, to a million dollars a month you are 10xing your order flow. So you have to think about stuff like that. Next one is cash flow. Cash flow is probably a, a very, you know, uh, I would say difficult one. Um, most people do have it mastered by 100K a month, but there's still a lot of people that struggle from 100K a month to a million dollars a month due to the level of expenses and just, you know, the, the amount of money coming in and out on a monthly basis is insane from 100K a month to a million dollars a month, especially with ad costs and stuff like that. Um, so I'm no expert in this. Um, I'm going to give y'all a really good recommendation. It's my good friend, Jarrett. I actually have a series of videos coming out with him uh, very soon. It's all going to be sharks though. So just keep that in mind. And uh, you can find Jarrett at the scale method.com. He specifically specializes in cash flow uh, for e-com agency, uh, e-com business owners. Okay. Now with that being said, he is not a CPA. He is not a tax specialist. Okay. So he even helps CPAs and tax specialists improve um, you know, cash flow for these particular brands. So if you have a CPA, cool. If you have a tax specialist, cool. That's not what Jared does. Jared does something completely different with helping you out with cash flow in the back end of the business. All right. Next one, obvious one is inventory. You know, I've had people come to me and say, hey, Nick, I want to hit a million dollars a month. I'm like, great. Do you have the inventory? Uh, well, we could get the inventory. Mike, you don't even have the inventory to hit a million dollars a month. Okay. So let's say for example, you want to hit a hundred K a month. All right. You don't even have a million dollars a month or you don't even have a hundred K a month. All right. But you only have a hundred K in inventory. So you want to hit a hundred K in a month. So like next month you want to do a hundred thousand dollars, but you only have a hundred K in inventory retail value. Okay. That means you would have to sell literally every dollar of your inventory, hit that hundred K a month. Okay. Now the problem with this is that the following month you would literally make zero dollars because you had no inventory. Okay. Now, also out of that 100K in inventory, what is actually sellable? 
okay? Because a big problem with inventory is that, oh yeah, we have $100,000 in inventory, but only about 60% could actually be sold because everything else is like odd sizes, odd colors, maybe things that just, you know, odd flavors. If you're like some of a supplement brand, like protein brand or something like that, you have certain SKUs that sell significantly better than others, okay? So yeah, you might have 100K in inventory, but maybe only 60% is actually sellable. So you actually have about $60,000 in inventory, okay? So that means over the next 60 days, if you wanna survive, you can only do $1,000 a day in revenue, okay? So just something to think about, all right? The second thing too is you need to look at um, inventory lead time, okay? So let's say for example, if you, you know, you have an inventory lead time of three months, okay? If you place the order today, 90 days, you'll get the inventory in-house and you can be able to ship it, okay? If you are in a situation where you only have a 60K in inventory, you know, sellable inventory, okay? Well, I can only do $60,000 in the next 90 days, okay? That means I can only do like $750 a day in revenue up until that 90 days before I can start selling at a higher rate when that new inventory comes in. So it's all things you have to keep in mind. Systems, be able to systemize operations within the business, hire slow and fire fast, okay? I can't tell you guys how important systems are. Like literally everything you do in your business, you need to systemize to where anyone can come into your business and replicate that system and get the same result as you, okay? And oh, well Nick, no one can do it like me. Fuck off, you need, you can. Yes, you can get that shit fixed because that's that was my biggest thing was that I, I meet so many business owners that feel like they have a you know chip on their shoulder. No one can do it like me. It's my specialty. Yada yada yada. And it's like okay, cool. Well, look, you can keep doing that, but outsource everything else in the business where you only focus on that right there. Okay, so you need to, be able to systemize your business. Um, leverage, you know, Google Drive. That's where we like to store a lot of our systems. Literally, you know. Here's how to handle this specific customer service question, okay? Google Doc, that questions on the top. Here's how to handle it. Step A, step B, you know, yada, 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 okay? We have a lot of systems inside of our agency, how to build ads and stuff like that. Um, I also give about 30 different SOPs specifically um, inside of the agency, uh, or not an agency, but inside of our inner circle list. So again, if you want mentorship bias, click link below have Nick Terra mentor you. I give you about 30 plus SOPs specifically around the marketing fundamentals. Now, next one is leadership. And this is actually the last one right here. I can't tell you how many amazing businesses have been burned down by piss poor leadership, okay? These are the people in charge. And if you're a terrible leader, trust me, you can have a great product, you can have a great team, you can have great ads and everything like that. But if you're a horrible leader, you will burn it all down, okay? I mean, very transparent here with you because I've personally been there before. You know, my early days were trying to figure out how to become a good leader. I, you know, had some bad dealings with employees just because of my own fault of not being a great leader, okay? Now, questions to ask yourself is, do you empower your team to perform their best? Do you create an environment where A players can be A players, okay? Or do you sit down and do you guide your team and watch over your team, you know, hawk over the shoulder and like, you know, everything has to be done your way, your way or the highway, okay? That's a problem, all right? If you're a helicopter parent, helicopter boss, like you need to take a step back, okay? Oh, well, my team member doesn't know how to do this. Then is it, then is it your fault for not properly training your team member and giving them the right SOPs or the, is it your fault because you hired the wrong team member on your team? That's the type of things you need to think about, okay? At the end of the day, take full accountability, all right? Are you an order giver? You know, do you sit down and just demand orders to your team? Or do you lead by example, okay? These are some really big things you need to think about here, all right? And do you keep your team aligned on company goals? Something recently I just learned after at a mastermind with a few other seven and eight figure business owners was OKRs, objective, key results. Look it up on Google. OKRs. Okay. You could be making a dollar a day right now and implement OKRs in your business and see an impact on it. Okay. OKRs is simple. All right. You set an objective. All right. Company objective is to do a hundred thousand dollars a month. You have 90 days to complete it. Okay. What are all the key results that need to happen around that to make that possible? Then what objective do we need to create for each of those key results to make that key result happen, okay? So we can keep going further down, okay? So for example, the objective is to do $100,000 a month in revenue, then what key result needs to happen? Well, we need to spend 30K on Facebook ads, okay? Well, the objective becomes 30K on Facebook ads. What are the key results that need to happen for that? You assign that 30K to whoever's running your ads, that objective, 
and they have to give you the key results that they need to do to make that that 100k you know that 30k happen okay so you giving tasks and responsibilities to your team members and they're telling you what they need to do to accomplish that okay you're not telling them that's a big difference right there now you're letting a players be a players and you're letting your team thrive and everything is flowing to you in terms of letting your team you know provide impact into the business and letting your team you know get into that flow state letting your team actually feel like they're helping you creating an impact into the business okay and that's a lot more of a you know thriving and um you know i would say more impressive work culture to be part of than just i show up to work every day and some guy yells at me every day and tells me to do this and this okay don't be that specific leader right there cool guys um again these are just all the different things i've learned you know hopefully this helps out you know these are all specifically like i said from six figures a month to seven figures a month i've seen many different brands implement these things so um personally on three of brands of which we scaled and also to multiple other brands i've just been around and really hope this was valuable to you make sure the like button hit that subscribe button for new videos every monday wednesday and friday and i'll talk to you guys later peace out